when I was just a young medical officer, we would prescribe antibiotics and not bother too much about antimicrobial resistance if we even understood what it was. It's been almost 20 years since I first came upon the issue of antimicrobial resistance and I must say that things have changed a lot. And it is a global issue, so it does not only affect one specific region, but it affects all of us and it affects us globally. In the O'Neill report, and they estimate that the number of deaths from antimicrobial resistance will be as big as cancer in 2050, unless we do something to stop this. If this misuse of antibiotic will continue, and we will lose all possibilities to treat bacterial infections, it will mean catastrophe for us. One of the common refrains from doctors was that their patients would ask them for antibiotics. And if they did not receive the antibiotics, they would not be happy. And in one study in the UK, in a primary care setting, it was estimated that 83% of UTI cases that are treated with antibiotics are actually done so without any kind of diagnostic test. The challenge has always been a test that is rapid and cheap. There's no escaping from these two parameters. So there is a big need for, for uh, diagnostics in this field and particularly for rapid antibiotic susceptibility testing. If the government can invest uh, on some uh, more sophisticated diagnostic tools which are quicker and more accurate, in the long run actually is more cost effective, especially in reducing the chance of uh, antibiotic resistance strains. Without this change, this will continue to increase the rates of antibiotic resistance for the foreseeable future. We can develop the innovative solution against AML. We will fight against AML.